Hi, my name is Michelle Gardner, and today I'll be showing you how to update your information in your ward directory. Now, there are a few reasons why you'd want to go check to see if your information needed to be updated. One of them may be that you haven't updated anything in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, another would be that you recently moved within your ward boundaries or with things going more virtual nowadays because of the way things are in the world, there's more opportunities. It's important to have the right contact information on there for each individual in your household and how you would like them to get a hold of. We all have our own email addresses. Our teenagers even have email addresses. And so if you only have one email address and one phone number on there, then that's the person that's gonna get all the emails and all the phone calls. And so we just wanna go and make sure things are updated. The other thing is just to update your pictures as well. It helps your leadership and other ward members get to know your face as we're not seeing them as often right now. And it's so important to put a name to a face. So let's get started. There are two ways to update your information. One is to send what needs to be updated to your ward clerk or the other is to do it yourself. And I'll show you how to do that here. And don't be afraid to pause this video as needed as we move through in case your device is taking longer to get through certain areas. To do this, I'll be showing you using the Member Tools app on your phone or your tablet, which looks like this. If you don't have your, this app on your device yet, no problem. Just go to the App Store on your device and it, type in Member Tools and download it. This app is completely free to download, as are all of the church's apps, so don't worry about that. If you already have the app on your device, it's a good thing to check and make sure it's updated before we get going, so go ahead and click update now. Okay, now that your device is loaded and or updated, go ahead and click on it and we'll open the app. The first screen that will open will be the directory. Go ahead and type your last name in it to find your family's name. Once you see your name, click on it, and it will open up to the main page where you get a brief overview of your household. Here, you wanna double check and make sure each person's calling is the correct one, that that is the phone number that they like to receive texts and phone calls to, and that is the email that they would like specific email communication sent to. So really society people get really society emails that elders quorum get elders quorum emails, etc. Also make note of any emails or phone numbers that are in this orange color with the lock symbol next to it. It means there's a privacy setting on it, which is totally fine, but it also means that only ward leadership can see it and the rest of the members can't, which if you have a state calling, that makes it really hard for other people in the state to call you. If you have a, um, a specific leadership calling in the ward, it makes it hard for your ward members to be able to call you. So just be aware of that. If you scroll down the page, you'll see the rest of your household information and your children. Make sure that the household phone number is the one you want all your kids to be reached at or anybody else. In my home, that is my cell phone number because that is our home phone. But if you have a landline, that's a great place to put there. If you have a work number, that may not be where you want it because you don't want all those phone calls to your work number. And the same rule pretty much applies for the household email. Where do you want the communication for the rest of the members in your household to go if it's not for you and your spouse? For me, it's my personal email that's also on my personal account. And quickly make sure that your address is correct and on the map that it's placed in the right spot. Here I've blurred out our map, but yours it should pinpoint to your house. If you have any edits that need to be made to your household, go ahead and click at the edit button at the top there. For an individual's information that needs to be edited, go ahead and click on their name. And in this case, we're gonna use my husband's. Same as the first screen. To edit the individual's information, you're gonna click edit at the top. You can change their phone number, their email in here, and any of their privacy settings. This is also where you can update their profile picture, which is awesome when you see a 18 year old with a five year old picture. So let's get those updated. To edit any of the information here, you're going to go ahead and click on that red circle with the minus sign in it. It's going to delete the information there and then a plus sign will show up and you can add in the new info. If they don't have a say any phone number there, there will be just that plus sign. Go ahead and click on it. And again, if you accidentally click on it, you'll just have to type in the correct phone number again if it was correct before. 
Down here in this area is where your privacy settings are. Each one is set for the stake level, so our household is visible to the stake, so meaning our house phone number, our house email. Um, then there's your personal settings and how you want the stake ward levels to be able to see that. And then the household bottom one overall, some of our kids are viewable to the stake, like our teenagers, so their teen friends can find them, but my younger kids are not viewable on the stake level. And so that's why it says multiple values. To edit any of these, go ahead and click on that little arrow there and another screen will pop up. There is an explanation screen for each privacy setting that pops up before this, but this is what the privacy setting looks like on my husband's account. If you see here, this is why his email was orange on that main screen. So I went ahead and changed that. By clicking visible to the stake, that means his email is available to anybody from a stake perspective, another member in an, another ward in the stake can see his email address, his phone number, and his image. Which, as you can probably tell by now, that I am a huge fan of having your image viewable to the public, at least on a stake level for teenagers and up. Go ahead and click done when you have the settings the way you want them. This will take you back to edit your personal info on the individual that you're editing. You can click save now, which I do often because I don't trust things. Or you can go ahead and if you want to up update that picture, click edit and go in there and upload a new picture. Or you can take one directly from your camera. There's options there to do those things. And you're done. Make sure you click save before you leave this page to save any of your edits and if you run into any issues go ahead and contact your ward clerk with the information you like updated and don't stress over trying to make this work for you there are years where i swear this app never let me edit it so i always had to go through the ward clerk i hope this was helpful and let me know if there's any more visual via video tutorials that you would like done in the future and i can put them on my list to do